Hey guys, welcome to the Daily Word Bible Study, a plain and simple book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse study through the entire Bible. We are currently are in the book of Hosea, a Hosea, a Hosea, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Um, an interesting prophecy, um, probably the last prophet, prophet generation before the northern kingdom of Israel falls to the Assyrian. And they are actually deported, taken from the land. Um, and as a kind of a FYI, um, you also could trace the beginnings of the Samaritans to this period of time. In other words, when Israel is deported from the land, foreigners moved into the land. Um, and then Israelites those who were left, and then those actually when some or the few uh, remnant came back, started marrying some of the foreign people, thus they became Samaritans. Okay, that's kind of the history there. Um, so, but the prophecy of Hosea, Hosea um, also we see right off, and we started this last time, I'll get right into it because it is uh, a very interesting prophecy. Uh, here we go. All right, so in verse, chapter one again, verse one says, the word of the Lord came to Hosea, uh, the son of Bari, during the reigns of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and, H and Hezekiah, King of Judah and Jeroboam, the sons of Johash, King of Israel. So all of this here was sort of this was the reign of his property, and after the prophecy is up. To, I'm sorry. And then right around the time, about 20 years after this, the northern kingdom of Israel falls. So again, one of the purpose of the prophecies or the writing of the prophets uh, is to begin to warn Israel to turn from their wicked ways, which they do not. So verse two, and I said this last time that uh, God will oftentimes tell the prophet to do things to illustrate a point, to illustrate their unfaithfulness. Um, and some of these things, ooh, you know, put like this, I'm glad I'm not a prophet. But in this case, in verse two, he said the Lord when the Lord first spoke to Hosea, he said to him, go marry a promiscuous wife and have children of promiscuity from, for the land's committed blatant acts of promiscuity by abandoning the Lord. So in other words, he just, he was commanded to marry the completely, uh, an ungodly woman. Now again, this is the exception to the rule. Uh, if you go out and marry a person that is not a godly person, and I, I use the term godly because godly depicts an attitude towards God, not perfection. So I'm not saying that people are not perfect. So you may pick, marry a person, and as we all will do, we will um, make mistakes, we will sin, you know, and um, we will offend, but it's, it's different when a person is ungodly. And so this woman was a harlot. We would call her a loose person, a harlot person. And so the, the illustration would be, remember this is a prophet who is marrying this person. God, you would be ill-advised to do that now, okay? Um, um, so, but the image that God is going to give, and keep this in mind, when you were called to be a prophet, and God will tell you, he would tell you to, um, he would establish you as a prophet, you would establish as a holy man, as a holy voice. So the question is, uh, holy man, why are you marrying a harlot? Uh, right? So the imagery is, 
to illustrate Israel, you're the harlot. That That's the illustration. This is how bad things are that God is calling his people harlots, whores. Okay? So, verse 3, so he went and married Gomer, daughter of uh, Diblin, and she conceived and bore him a son. Then the Lord said to him, name him Jezreel, for in a little while I will bring the bloodshed of Jezreel on the house of Jehu and put an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel on the day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. So this is, the, again, and by the way, this is around 20 to 30 years where this is going to come to pass, where the house of Israel, okay, the northern kingdom, that's what he's referring to here. She conceived again and gave birth to a daughter, and the Lord said to him, Name her No Compassion, right? That's a nice name. Hey, what's your name? No Compassion. Hey, No Compassion, come here, right? No Compassion. He said, for I will no longer have compassion on the house of Israel. I will certainly take them away. But I will have compassion on the house of Judah. And I will deliver them by the Lord their God. I will not deliver them by bow sword of war or by horse or cavalry now um so the uh, <laughs> it, again all of this and quite uh, lengthy uh um extenuating lengths to go to to show it or just how bad they are now keep this in mind despite all of this they will not listen they will not turn either Verse 8, after Gomer had weaned no compassion, she conceived and gave birth to a son. And the Lord said, name him not my people. So, I mean, is, <clears throat> so is God not being clear here? Hey, not my people. Hey, compa no compassion. Hmm. So, uh, oh, I mean, what's the first one? I think the first one, uh, uh, the first name was Jezreel. Okay, Jezreel. Okay, Jez, G, uh, let me go back if I'm making sure I'm pronouncing this uh, right here. Yeah, Jez real. Okay. Um, where am I at? Uh, let me skip down here. Verse 8 again. And Gomer had weaned after. Gomer had uh, weaned no compassion. She conceived and gave birth to a son. Then the Lord said, name him not my people. Now, you can imagine the wife like, this is what you want to name him? This is what you want to name my children? No compassion. And now, not my people. He says, for you are not my people. And I will not be your God. Yet the number of the Israelites would be like the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured or counted. And in the place where they are told, you are not my people, they will be called sons of the living God. Now, um, Hebrew, quote this, and uh, you see writers quoting this very verse of scripture right here. Um, I want to say Romans 11, either Romans 9 or Romans 11. Let me see if I can. Pull it up right quick. Uh, and 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 what's important about this too is when you see this, when you see this, um, uh, these kind of prophecies here, then it also validates the book itself. So the fact that they prophesied. So here you have Paul. Uh, let me see if I can find it right here. Um, when Paul, when Paul uses this, uh, when he quotes it like this, this, this verse, it validates the book itself. Uh, I think it's Romans nine. Uh, let's see here. Mm -hmm, okay. Uh, yes. So this is Romans nine 
and in verse 23 you know what let me I'm gonna go a little different here so y'all can see it too uh, while I was tripping over this Romans 9 okay all right so look at verse uh, number 25 uh, okay come on all right here we go so uh, all right so here is Paul speaking or prophesying uh, to them oh I'm in the wrong chapter all right here we go so this is Romans 9 it says and Isaiah cries out concerning Israel the number of the sons of Israel be as the sand of the sea only a remnant will be saved for the Lord will carry out his sentence upon the earth fully and swiftly uh, yeah, that's not what I was looking for here yeah wait a minute yeah Romans 9 where you at 27 oh I gotta go back up here he's quoting different ones sorry guys here we go verse 25 he says as indeed he says in Hosea or Hosea those who are not my people I will call my people and I remember it not my people was the name of the middle child <laughs> those who call not my people and her who was called not beloved I will call it beloved all right so uh, I just wanted to show you all uh, um, those verses there okay um verse 8 again uh, after Goma had read compassion uh, she conceived and gave birth then the Lord said uh, name him not my people for you are not my people uh, and I will not be your God yet the number of the Israelites would be like the sand of the sea which cannot me be measured or counted and in the place where they are told you are not my people they will be called sons of the living God and and the Judeans and Israelites would be gathered together they will appoint for themselves a single ruler and go up from the land uh, for the day of Jezreel will be great so again you see the prophecies that one day they will be a united kingdom and not a separate kingdom verse 2 call your brothers my people and your and your sisters compassion Rebuke your mother, rebuke her, for she is not my wife, and I am not her husband. Let her remove the promiscu promiscuous look from her face and her adultery from between her breasts. Otherwise, I will strip her naked and expose her as she was on the day of her birth. I will make her like a desert and like a parched land, and I will let her die of thirst. I will have no compassion on her children because they are children of promiscuity. Yes, their mother is promiscuous. She conceived them and acted shamefully. For she thought, I will go after my lovers and uh, the men who gave me food and water, my wool, my flax, my oil, and my drink. Therefore, this is what I will do. I will block her ways, excuse me, block her ways with thorns. I will enclose her with a wall so that she cannot find her path. She will pursue her lovers but not catch them. She will seek them and not find them. Then she will think, I will go back to my former husband, for then it was better for me than now. She does not recognize that it is I who, who gave her the grain the new wine and the oil, a lavish silver and, and gold on her, which they use for bail. Therefore, 
called Take Back My Grain in Its Time and My New Wine in Its Season. And I will take away my wool and linen, which were to cover her nakedness. And I will expose her shame in the sight of her lovers. And no one will rescue her from my hands. For I will put an end to all her celebrations, her feasts, new moon, Sabbath, and all her festivals. I will devastate... By the way, keep this in mind, he's talking about Israel. So this promiscuous woman. And if you should stop and think about this, um, um, you could get a very good image of certain women today and how they act. Exactly like this. It's amazing. Um, verse 12, I would devastate her vine and her fig trees. She thinks that these are her wages that her lovers had given her. I will turn them into thickets and the wild animals will eat them. I will punish her for the days of Baal. And when she buried incense to the, burned, when I mean, she burned incense to them, put on her rings of jewelry and went after her lovers, but forgot me. Um, therefore, I'm going to persuade her, lead her, and to the wilderness and speak tenderly to her uh, there I will give her vineyards back to her and and make the valley of Achar uh, into a gateway of hope there she will respond to the child in the days of her youth as in the day she came out of the land of Egypt in the day this is the Lord's declaration you will you will call me my husband and no longer call me my Baal. Now, kind of an insult, right, for the Baal worship. And uh, um, but it, but notice also the again the imagery here that God is using. Okay, yeah, as He's referring to Israel in their sin. Okay, verse eighteen. On that day, I will make a covenant for them with the wild animals and the birds of the sky, and the creatures that crawl on the ground, and I will shatter shadow bow, sword, uh, and weapons of war in the land. I will enable the people to rest securely, and I will take you to be my wife forever. I will take you to be my wife in righteousness, justice, love, compassion. I will take you to be my wife uh, in faithfulness, and you will know Yahweh. On that day, I will respond. This is the Lord's declaration. I will respond um, to the sky, and it will res and it will respond to the earth. Uh, the earth will open the grain, the new wine, and the oil, and they will respond to Jezreel. And I will sow her in the land for myself, and I will have compassion on no compassion okay uh um and i will say uh to not my people you are my people and he will say you are my god hmm now it is interesting that we should always take this again in imagery why because notice when he says you are not my people and he will say Notice he didn't say, she will say. So the imagery of the marriage here is to show, he's not talking about, so so again, it's just, it's just imagery. But notice again, when we start off in chapter one, when we talk about the, the reason why um, he named the three children, right? So in all of the imagery now we see the three children being used um, um, uh, in the illustration as God is showing, number one, judgment, uh, the exposing of their sin, then the judgment, and then the take, him taking them back, restoring them. All right, so we'll get more on that in our next study, though, in chapter three, though. He has a lot to say here. 
All right, guys, don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to BP, the Bible Perspective. And as always, if you have a thought or comment, add it to the comment section below. All comments are welcome. Till the next study, I'll see you then.